the cesarean section if you don't have any condition that requires you to give birth through a cesarean section would you still choose it over having a vaginal birth okay the answer wholly depends on each and every individual welcome to the nursing moms and in this video today i'm going to talk about cesarean section briefly the indications why one can have a cesarean section birth the complications and any possible risk that is associated with the cesarean section type of birth. Welcome and watch to the end. Cesarean section is a surgical procedure used to deliver baby or babies through an incision into the abdomen. As per the schedule, we have two different types of cesarean section. One of them is the elective cesarean section and the emergency cesarean section. Actually, cesarean section is commonly known as the CS. Let's use the word that you are used to. It's a CS, and if I say CS, I'll be referring to the cesarean section. Let's start by discussing what is an elective cesarean section. Elective CS. This is a planned or scheduled type of CS that is planned ahead of time. Actually, the doctor and the mother sit down and chooses a specific suitable time for both the mother and the baby to have this CS done. There are so many reasons why a mother can go through an elective CS, apart from the personal reason where one would, would just choose to go for a CS. There are some medical conditions that would force a mother to have a planned elective CS. Let's go to the indications where one can have an elective CS. The first reason why one would want to have an elective CS is when one is expecting a big baby. Big baby is also known as macrosomic baby. If you're expecting a big baby, actually, and having a vaginal birth can be so traumatic and can lead to complications like fistula. To minimize the risk of all this, the, the doctor would choose to have a cesarean section performed. Another indication for an elective CS is when you've had two or more previous cesarean section or any surgical operation done to your abdomen. Actually, if you go into labor with previous cesarean section scars, you are at a risk of getting your uterus rupture. To minimize all these, the doctor would choose the best option, which is the cesarean section. A low-lying placenta, also known as placenta previa. Generally or normally, placenta is always situated on top of the uterus, on the upper side. And in this case, you'll find the placenta down near the cervix. If you go into labor with a low-lying placenta, you have a risk of placenta detachment causing much bleeding. Because actually when the uterus will be contracting, there's high chances that the placenta will detach itself first, even before the baby is born, causing massive bleeding. To prevent all of these, the doctor would choose cesarean section. Again, if you have infections like herpes, it will be very difficult to have vaginal birth for the risk of infection transmission to the baby. So the best option if you have conditions like herpes is to have an elective CS. Malpositions like the baby can be breached, the baby can be in a transverse line, the baby can be head down but with the hyperflexed, that is the facial presentation, or the baby can be in a bro presentation. All these presentations doesn't really favor a vaginal birth. And if by week 36 your baby is not turned to have a cephalic presentation, then the best birth option here is to have an elective CS. Suspected cephalopelvic disproportion. Cephalopelvic disproportion is the situation where your pelvic bones cannot allow having a vaginal birth. In this case, the doctor would choose the best option, which is the cesarean section. The benefits of elective CS is that it gives the mother an opportunity to choose on the day and the date she wants her baby to be born. Again, it, it reduces the risk of complications that the mother might have compared to having a vaginal birth. Let's now discuss the other type of cesarean section, the emergency cesarean section. In an emergency case, the mother had an intention of having a vaginal birth, but something happened along 
the way that was put saying the fetal life in a compromising situation or even the maternal life then quick decision has to be reached here and an emergency cs must be performed let's look at the conditions where an emergency cs can be performed number one fetal distress fetal distress is a sign that your baby is not okay and your baby is not receiving enough oxygen from the placenta if an immediate action is not taken then you might lose your baby. There are several signs that will show you your fetus is in distress. Tell us that the nurses or the doctor will be monitoring your fetal heart rate. Any deterioration may be to tachycardia or to bradycardia, that is a low or extremely high fetal heart rate is a sign of fetal distress. Another sign of fetal distress that you realize is when your baby pulls inside the womb that is the meconium stained liquor if the if the liquor is draining a meconium stain that is the greenish stained liquor then it's a sign that your baby is tired inside and an emergency action has to be done another reason for an emergency cs is a non-progressive labor actually a normal labor should have good contractions which always match the good dilatation and the effacement of the cervix with an end result of baby being born. Having an unprogressive labor or a prolonged labor or a slow labor can lead to an emergency CS. Actually, in this type of labor, you'll find that a mother is having contractions, but the cervix is not dilated. This can happen for several reasons, and it always puts the, the fetus life in a compromising situation. Actually, the best decision here is to have an emergency CS to help get out the baby. Conditions like preeclampsia or having an eclamptic fit can also lead to having an emergency cesarean section performed to help in restoring the situation. Cesarean section also predisposes you to getting your internal organs injured. Yeah, you are at a risk of getting your bladder and intestines injured if not well taken care of. Another thing is you're putting your future pregnancies at a risk. They will be having less chances of having a vaginal birth if you keep on doing a cesarean section willingly. The last thing you are at a risk of is bleeding. You can't compare a cesarean section delivery and a normal vaginal delivery blood loss. Actually, you'll be losing a lot of blood during cesarean section compared to when you are having a normal vaginal delivery without complications.